Hello everyone, it's Tana. Welcome back to my channel and the third video for the Holiday Card Series 2022. What did you think about all that snow? I cried inside a little, guys. I really did. So I'm showing you some products here that I may or may not use in today's video. I will tell you what they are as they show up. So this is Big, Lowe's, Big Bows Little Bows from Trinity Stamps and I bought the stamp set, the die set, and the hot foil set. So I went crazy with hat foiling a whole bunch of bows, big bows, little bows, positive, negatives, um, the little strip that acts as the ribbon coming down on your presents, all of it. As you can see, I did it all. I figured whatever I didn't use, I could save for some other Christmas cards. You never know, right? I don't know, whenever this hot foil machine comes out, I just have to play. I, I hot foiled quite a few things in those two days. It was two days, not one night, two days. Okay, moving on. So I'm not going to show you everything I hot foil. I'm just going to walk you through the process a couple times on screen here. Show you how I went about doing the ribbon strips and the backgrounds. So. I did not end up using the pink and main embossing folder in this card. I did emboss it. I ink blended it, uh, but when it came right down to it, it did not make it into the four cards I ended up making for this video. I did use the honeybee, let's see here, I got everything else so I can tell you the names. This one I'm using right here. It's the Honey Bee Plaid A2 Hot Foil Plate. I also pulled out the Pink Fresh Studio Diagonal Stripes Hot Foil Plate. And the sentiment I use inside the card at the end of the video is from the Stamp Timber Gina K collaboration for Sparkling Season Stamp Set. Okay, so I recently purchased the Matte Gold Hot Foil. I'm still fooling around with paper, guys. I re recently bought Hammer Mill, and I have some of the Spellbinders specialty paper, and I have the glossy black cardstock from Aaron Lee Creative. And I've also noticed, though, I think the Spellbinders is phenomenal for hot foiling, and I also think the Hammer, Hammer Mill did well as well. And I know a lot of people are raving about it. Oh, that's my opaque white foil. The first time I've ever used it. And here's me embossing that embossing folder. But, like I said, we're not going to end up using that. Anyway, I do think it also depends not only on the paper, but how hot your hot foil is, your machine is. Which, with the Glimmer hot foil system, you don't have a temperature. And also, here are some panels I made with the solid hot foil plate so I can do some sentiments. And this is using saltwater taffy oxide ink to ink blend those panels that I did not end up using. I didn't take it out because I knew there was other things I wanted to talk to you about and it was only for a few seconds. So, Moving on, as I was saying, not just the temperature of the hot foil machines but also uh, the type of foil. I did notice there was quite a difference between using, say, the matte foil or the opaque foil as to all those specialty foils with the glimmers and shines and faceted emeralds and all that in it. So I think that makes a difference as well. Anyway, moving on. I used my new Lumberjack plaid, very first time I'm using it, on this plaid uh, panel. And then I used my Rustic Wilderness, and both in regular Distress Ink, on the negative side of that. Oh no, it's not the negative side. I forgot I did four of those. Two regular, two negative panels. Anyway, sorry, excuse me. On the other panel. And now I'm going to... I, at first I was really painstakingly making sure that my ribbon strips were going on exactly equal on my card front and I believe these were trimmed down to four by five and a quarter and then the little tops to the presents I believe were trimmed to 
one and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I'll show that later on. Anyway, I thought it would be fun to put uh, the, that, the ribbon stripes diagonal on that panel. I did one up and down. I did one that was uh, up and down and across. Okay, so for an easel card, which is what we're making today, you want to score your top folding card bases on one side at two and three quarters so that that's, that's the part you're going to have slide up to reveal your message and place it behind the little, I don't know what to call it, placeholder to keep your card up and as a decoration. So here I am looking to see if it's going to work, how it's going to work, etc, etc. I decided I wanted black panels behind all of the present panels. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just using my uh, Barely Arts glue, gluing those panels to their mats. This video was a long time in the making. There was something else I wanted to make this card do. Just couldn't get my brain to function right, so we'll see if I can pull it off in another video. Anyway, moving on. Now we're going to adhere our front panels to the card bases. You only want to put glue on that bottom half below the score line. Nowhere else on the front panel should there be glue. And then I just put a block on that to help it until it dries. And then I moved along to the next panel. It's really quite easy. Once you make an easel card, you kind of it's kind of difficult to forget how to make it. And here's the fourth one. A lot of background noise today. I apologize. The heater's running. And some other things are running. The space heater's running. Okay, so these are our, our present tops to the boxes. I put foam strips across those. But I left the very top of the panel bare. Because I don't want foam tape sticking up over the top edge of the card panel or the card base. Then I glued my bow <coughs> wherever you want really but in that one I glued it to the center of the top of the box. Then I'm placing my next one down. I wanted the box tops to be a little bit bigger width wise than the box itself but I did not want them to overhang the card base. So that's why I did the measurements that I chose. Now we have another one here. I really like that red and black too, the glossy black cardstock. It turned out really well. And the last one with the opaque white and the black, I really considered turning that into a birthday card, but since this is the holiday series, I stuck with the merry and bright theme. And I really like the way this bow was colored though, with the yellow greens. It turned out really nice. My favorite bow out of all of them. So now I have Merry and Bright cut out of those hot foil pieces I made with the negative pieces on the solid uh, hot foil plate. They also have three pieces of cardstock behind them for dimension. It's only like 80 pound cardstock. Originally these were going to be inside the card to hold up your front panel of your card when you put it up like an easel, but I decided to go with something else for the inside. Because I thought, the, even though the, the boxes, the presents were pretty, I thought they were a little bit bare. So I decided to dress them up with their sentiments on the front. So now we have our four card panels to go inside the cards. I'm showing you here that I chose a sentiment to go on that set. And like I said, on those cards, and it's from the Stamp Timber Sparkling Season collab with Gina K Designs. Greetings of the season and best wishes for the new year is what it says. And then I took those tiny bows and two layers of cardstock behind them. And this is what we're going to use to prop up our cards. So I did outline them in green uh, just so they wouldn't look totally mismatched because the two pieces of cardstock behind them, I colored them whatever the color on the bow was, green or red. 
So here I'm just going to take turns going down the assembly line, adhering the inside card panel with the message, and then gluing the little bow inside. You have this third one here. And there's nothing for the fourth one. The footage went missing. But you all know how to glue a bow into a card, I'm pretty sure. So here's all the cards, what they look like, <clears throat> and in easel form. And that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you like what you saw here today. I hope you're enjoying the videos I'm able to put up for the holiday card video series for 2022. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram for more inspiration. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.